in this video we'll take a look at using PXT General with Bitwig Studio. Now of course PXT General can be used with virtually any DAW or other MIDI software, but Bitwig Studio is basically the new kid on the block and lots of people are unfamiliar with its settings and such. So in this video we'll take a look at what sort of settings you need to make and also how to best utilize PXT General's feature set with Bitwig Studio. The first thing you'll need to do is set up PXT General's MIDI settings according to the recommendations in the manual. So for the instrument output, you'll select from PXT General 1. For the user controls input, you'll select to PXT General 2. And for the user controls output, you'll select from PXT General 2. In Bitwig Studio, you'll go to Options, Preferences, you'll click on the Controllers tab, click the Add Controller Manually button, select Generic MIDI Keyboard, and select from PXT General 1 as the MIDI input. This will allow you to use the basic feature set of PXT General. So you'll be able to play instruments using the pads with any scale you like, access pitch bend, mod wheel, aftertouch, and other features like the chord triggers. As far as controlling Bitwig Studio, PXT General provides a variety of options that you can use. In this example, I'm going to show you uh, one of the more powerful options, and that's the Mackie control emulation capabilities. We'll start by looking at the upper controls. That's the eight encoders above the display, the display itself, the 16 buttons underneath the display, and the six buttons to the right of the display. When the scales button is on, most of these controls are used for adjusting scale settings and other settings related to playing instruments. When the scales button is turned off, these controls can be used for controlling software. The settings related to these controls can be made in the user assignments editor. Here I'll select the fixed MCU option. This will set up all the upper controls for Mackie control emulation. In Bitwig Studio, I'll add another controller, the Mackie MCU Pro, and select from PXT General 2 and to PXT General 2 as its MIDI ports. If you click on the question mark button, this will bring up a control reference for the MC Pro controller script. This will show you all the functionality that it provides, and you should definitely refer to this so that you can see what sort of options you have available. With these settings in place, we'll immediately be able to control some aspects of Bitwig Studio. First of all, the track selection buttons will select tracks. The track state buttons will mute tracks. If the shift button is held down, the track selection buttons will arm tracks, and the track state buttons will solo tracks. The encoders have four main modes of functionality that you can access with these four buttons here. The first is volume mode, and this actually isn't all that useful on its own uh, because the display shows volume levels, but the encoders actually control pan levels. I'll show you how you can fix that in just a little bit. The next mode is sends mode, and this allows you to control sends. By default, this will control the first set of sends. If you press the button again, you control the second set of sends, and you can do that for up to five sets of sends. The next mode is pan mode, and here the encoders control panning. The final mode is device mode, and here the encoders control parameters of the selected device. If the device has more than eight parameters, you can use the bottom two buttons to navigate between parameter pages. We can extend this functionality by assigning some other buttons to MCU functions. As an example, I've signed a button to flip, a button to bank down, to bank up, to F1, F2, and shift. With these assignments in place, we can access some more functionality. First of all, going to that problem that I mentioned with volume mode, where the display shows volume levels but the encoders control pan, when the flip button is turned on, the encoders will control volume. Also, in all of the encoder modes, the encoders offer relatively coarse adjustment. When the shift button that I assigned is held down, the encoders offer fine adjustment. The bank up and down buttons allow you to navigate between groups of eight tracks to control. Right now I'm controlling the first eight tracks in the set. I can bank up to control the next eight tracks in the set. The F1 and F2 buttons have a variety of different functions, but the most useful is in device mode. In device mode, if you press the button again, the display will switch to showing which preset is selected. You could then use the F1 and F2 buttons to navigate between presets. We can extend this even further by assigning other controls to global functions. So for example, I've assigned a button to click, this encoder to jog wheel, this button to undo, a button to solo, trim, record, play, enter, and the arrow buttons to the MCU cursor buttons. The click button will toggle the metronome. By default, the jog wheel will function like rewind and fast forward, so it will control the song position. When the shift button is held down, 
it'll control tempo in half BPM increments. Undo will undo the last action. So for example, I'll create a clip, which I can do by pressing the enter button twice. Then I'll undo that. And if shift is held down, undo will redo the last undo. Solo will toggle shuffle on and off. Trim will toggle clip launcher automation. Play will toggle playback. Record will toggle the record button. The enter and cursor buttons can be used in a variety of ways, just like the enter and arrow keys on your keyboard. So I can navigate around in the clip launcher. If the shift button is held down, the cursor buttons can be used to navigate to different areas of the screen. So here I'll move to the browser section, and now I can navigate the browser and load items with the enter button. As shown in previous videos, PXT General also allows you to send keystrokes and keyboard macros. You can set those up in the macro editor. To give you a few examples, I'll set up a delete key, the shortcut for opening up the commander, and then a macro that can duplicate the selected clip and then launch it. You can access these keystrokes and macros by holding down the repeat button. This will give you momentary access. Or you can press the repeat button quickly, which will toggle them on or off. So here I'll trigger the commander shortcut and then use the cursor keys to select duplicate. That'll duplicate the selected clip. Then I'll delete that with the delete keystroke. And finally, I'll use this macro to duplicate the selected clip and launch it. And the last thing I want to show you is that using PXT General doesn't prevent you from using other controller scripts that are created for push. PXT General actually gives you two different options in terms of how that can work. When this live mode option is off, pressing the user button will switch to a blank slate mode where you can do whatever you want with the controls in the display. This blank slate mode can work with virtually any sort of controller script regardless of how it's set up. Alternatively, if you're using a script that's set up similar to the push script in live, you'll turn this live mode option on. To give you an example of how this could work, I've set up a quick script here. So I'll add that as a controller. I'll select Ableton Push as the input and output. And now I can use the user button to switch between this script and all of the functionality that PXD General provides.